we're headed to a very different habitat, not quite so pristine, but still very important for bird diversity. Now we're out of that forest, or partially out. We're sitting here on the edge of the forest, and we've got totally new bird species. And the one that I saw here the other day and still sitting right here, that tree, can you believe that oh, one? Oh, sweet. Must be on territory here. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Baltimore Oriole? Baltimore Oriole. What a beautiful bird. Probably my favorite bird in this area. Look at him, he's just sitting there preening yeah. for us and singing. Well, yeah, I mean, you hear that song, those, those kind of slurred whistles and that yep. chattering? Yeah. That's actually a blackbird. It's related to blackbirds. It's uh, a blackbird? Yeah, it's an icterid. It's a, a very pretty icterid, but... Interesting. I didn't know orioles were blackbirds, but now blackbirds, these guys are frugivores, right? They nectar and fruit. Well, and insects. He's obviously catching insects up there too, but that seems different from blackbird. And orioles are a very diverse group of birds, but they're going to eat insects and feed insects to their young because they mm -hmm. need that protein. But, uh, you know, you could put out orange halves and uh, other kinds of fruit as your feeding station, and you can actually right. get those birds in to your yard because most of our yards um, kind of qualify as edge habitat. Yeah, and this is the habitat that, that this bird really loves. This is the forest edge, and they, they're, I guess, on the upswing because they love suburban neighborhoods. When I was a kid, I mean, we basically only saw these birds along big rivers, bottomland open cottonwood forests where I used to see yeah. them up in the mountains of yeah. North Carolina. A lot of the birds in here, too. It is. Warblers too. Hold up. Look at look up there. Uh -huh. Right up there. Yeah, a couple warblers. That. Oh, hey, that, that, I actually know that warbler. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, the yellow rump warbler, myrtle warbler, right? Yeah, that's the yellow rump. You'll hear birders refer to that bird as a butterbutt. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. which is a good name for it. It's a good name. When he turns around just like that, you can just see the the yellow on the on the rear end. Now, what's he doing here? I thought they wintered here. I see them at my feeder even in the winter time. Yeah, th that bird's kind of late. Um, they'll be pulling out of here pretty soon. They're headed to regions north of here, primarily in coniferous forests. Right. It's a bird that in our state, I haven't been seeing as many of them around during the winter time, and most of them apparently are on the coast. Is that a Cape May? Ah, uh, so you know your warblers pretty well, Patrick. <laughs> that is Dendroica tigrina. Oh, That's wow. a uh, that's a Cape May warbler, okay. and you see that orangish cheek patch on that right, pretty male, right. and the streaking tigrina, yep. the yeah. tiger stripes so there. Cape May warblers certainly don't breed here, right? Those are no, no. far north. Yeah, that bird's heading again to spruce fir forests where um, it makes uh, use of a pretty cyclical resource, spruce budworm, like a, a bunch oh, of other right, warblers do. Right. I know that bird because we get them on campus occasionally, some yeah. springs, but I don't see it every spring. And I'm just wondering, this is the second warbler that's really just transient that we've seen here. Mm -hmm. Saw the black pole, now we've seen the Cape May. Are these warblers always on the same route? Do we get the same warblers every year? What's going on there? Well, you know, you largely get the same uh, kind of group of warblers that come through and other migrants, but they might come through in different numbers relative to one another. Uh -huh. um, and sometimes in some years when the weather's really good, these birds push right over us. They're not being right. pushed down by right. bad weather. So That's a really neat bird, and it sort of makes you appreciate how important having these large green spaces in, in the Piedmont of South Carolina, like Clemson Forest, how important they are for even transients. Yeah, it is. I mean, to have that habitat, whether it's edge like this or mature forest like we've already been in, to have that habitat to stop, rest, feed, so yeah. you can continue the next leg of the journey is critically important. Yep. You got one more place to take me? Yeah, but Patrick, it's not going to be quite as pretty as the places <laughs> that we've seen here, but it's going to be real birdy. Cool. The comedian among the warblers has to be the yellow-breasted chat. It's so odd that we're not even really sure that it's a warbler. The strange calls and displays combined with the yellow breast give it its common name. Well, Patrick, we're in a place now that's not much